Today's presentation will go through a number of advanced uh, topics, but we're going to really cover what does Creo offer in the advanced package. So I'm going to cover all simulation uh, advanced topics today, and then we'll do a, uh, three demonstrations at the end. So it should, should be about 25 minutes today. So PTC Ad Creo Advanced Simulation covers all of Creo Simulate, the basic package, plus a number of things like vibration, advanced materials, nonlinear materials, and really giving you a, a product that can cover a larger number of more sophisticated types of problems. Okay, all again towards the benefit of reducing physical prototypes, reducing time to market. So uh, it really expands the type of problems that you can simulate. And I like this little quote in the bottom, without Creo Simulate, you won't leverage the power of Creo. Without Advanced, you won't leverage the full power of Creo Simulate. So if you do have, uh, if you do use Creo Simulate, you will uh, hit a point where it would be nice to uh, go beyond the basic package and be able to uh, use the advanced functionality. Uh, I think that happened pretty often if you used it a lot. Creo Simulate has, again, three different uh, packages. This is a nice little graphic that shows you. Um, out of the box, Creo Simulate, Simulate Lite comes with every seat of Creo, and you can just access it right away. Um, with any seat. It has a limit of, I think it's 200 surfaces, whether you're working in a part or an assembly. And then Creo Simulate covers those uh, kind of six broad areas there. And then Creo Simulate is the full, uh, full amount of the package, which I'm going to cover now in the next few slides on what uh, Creo Simulate Advanced has. And then I'll also just talk about our Simulate uh, technology. So when people talk about Creo Simulate, uh, I think it's really important to talk about the ease of use. It's very simple to use and very common if you already know the, the Creo workflow. It's also you're using the same data model that you have in the Creo model. So whether you import model or whether you're creating it or it's native to Creo, it's going to be um, quickly taken over to simulate. And then the P-Element technology, we really don't talk enough about it. It's, it's accuracy and reliability. I mean, the measure that we have inside of Creo today is 25 years old. It's an incredible measure. And our, our, our adaptive refinement and accuracy control of our mesh is, is, is uh, really un, uh, unmatched in the industry. Okay, so it's very quick to take, uh, take an, a, a model over to Creo Simulate and very simple to run. Uh, really out of the box. So if we just kind of compare the two types of FEA methods out there, we have the H method over on the left, which improves the results by using a finer mesh of the same element, of the same type of element in different areas. Okay, where the P element method improves results by using the same mesh, uh, so it does not remesh it, but increases the polynomial order or the shape function um, of the shape function, which means also it, it adds more math to the model. Okay, that's what it's really doing. The H method, again, refers to a decrease in the characteristic length of the elements, dividing each existing element into two or more elements without changing the type of elements used. Okay, so the number of elements must be increased in areas where the stress changes quickly over a small distance. And that's not the case in the P method. It really, uh, this method refers to increasing the degree of the highest complete polynomial. We just, PTC will just go ahead and throw more math in those areas versus elements. Okay. So at the core, the same exact um, mathematical problem is problems being solved. They're just different numerical methods to solve the same problem. You really should be getting the same answer from both of them. But we think we have a unique capability inside of Simulate where we, you know, we don't have to have uh, spend a lot of time on the mesh. That's just not something we spend a lot of time on. The numerical convergence. Uh, is achieved and displayed and corrected uh, automatically inside of Creo. Okay, so this is uh, this is pretty important. Um, anybody can get any kind of answer from any FEA software, but we think that Creo Simulate really has the best path, uh, the simplest path to get you accurate answers. Okay, if we just look at this graphically on this little uh, turbine blade using the H method. We have F, you know, run one, two, three, or four down below, 
each time we're increasing the elements, each time we're getting a different, a different answer. Um, obviously, getting towards a closer answer because we've we've reached convergence. Looking at the fourth answer versus the third answer. Okay, if we look at Creo Simulate, um, it doesn't have to have these different runs. It actually does that automatically, and it converges for us automatically. It saves us a lot of time and gets us to the right answer uh, quickly. Look at this graphically as well. How we actually work with a um, with a mesh, like on, on the left, and we'll look at the polynomial order on the right. Okay, so as we go through these different different steps or different runs, you can see the von Mises stress will be very clear where it is, and then you'll you'll notice that as we, it goes ahead and goes through these different 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 runs, uh, different levels, you can see the polynomial order will increase in those areas that where it needs to. Okay, so areas that are not affected by displacement or stress, um, those will actually stay at a, a first level or second level polynomial because it really is, an, a, is not an important area. But adaptively, it'll, what, what Creo Simulate will do, that what the solver will do, is put the right uh, appropriate element edges in the areas where the most activity is happening. All this is again transparent to the to the typical user. Um, you can certainly look at these kind of graphs, but it's not required. So if we go ahead and just kind of go through this list here, um, these are the things that are uh, part of Creo Simulate Advanced. Okay, and I have a slide for each of these, and I want to make sure I get through them all. So let's go ahead and go through them. So first is the ability to do a 2D model simplification. So you can do plane strain, plane stress, and axis symmetric. Again, this is um, really advantageous because these simulations run really fast. So you can do contact uh, in 3D, and it takes you know it takes a while to, to to go ahead and process that. But contact in 2D is super super fast. So it's a fraction of the time instead of full models. For uh, thermal, we have transient thermal analysis, and this is available uh, with Creo Simulate Advanced, where you can set up uh, a time lapse for your analysis and watch the, uh, the temperatures change through time. Large deformation uh, nonlinearity, okay, this is where it's still a linear problem, but what happens is we recalculate the stiffness matrix as the model is deforming in a large way, okay. So this is a uh, Pretty important to be able to pick this as an option when you have a large num a large uh, deformation. We have uh, also pre-stress uh, simulations, so pre-stress static analysis and pre-stress modal analysis. Okay, so what you would run is you would run a, a static analysis ahead of time, and then you would use that end result as your uh, kind of a uh, preload for your, your second analysis in the same way for a modal as well. So spin softening, stress softening are, are typical cases where you want to do that. Advanced Simulate covers four different dynamic analyses. Uh, dynamic time and dynamic frequency are the, are the two most common. Okay, So if you want to do like a, a shaker table type of analysis or um, uh, give something a a jolt and, and watch what happens as it as it dampens. These are the two you would choose for that. And then we also have dynamic random. Okay, this is where the the input to ra random vibration is a, is a PSD uh, power spectral density. Okay, and then uh, we also have dynamic shock, which is a shock which is specific for for seismic loads. And then when it comes to materials, uh, doing laminates. Uh, again, uh, is only part of advanced, so laminate layups uh, is available, orthotropic materials are available. And then for nonlinear materials, we do this uh, two ways. We do this with uh, uh, hyperelastic materials, which is shown here, where we cover the Aruda, Voice, Mooney Rivlin, Neo Hookian, Yao, those different types of, of, of laws. Uh, this is still a, a linear problem, but the elastomer or rubber material really acts in a, in a, in a nonlinear way. Okay. 
And then we do do a true plasticity as well with uh, power law, exponential law, and linear hardening. This is actually uh, truly taking the model to pass its yield into the plastic range where you can um, look at that. And I, I'll, I'll, show, I'll actually show you an example of this today. Uh, yielding uh, behavior is, is, given us, is given to us and then you can uh, look at the plastic stresses in, in the model. In addition, we can do advanced masses, advanced springs, and advanced shells. Okay, uh, and then uh, advanced bolt fasteners. Okay, so building off what's part of the basic, but then you also can define a preload, which might be important to you. That's only in advanced. And weighted link connections is advanced. And then some FEM mode, so the hierarchical meshing that you want to do if you want to send out your meshes to ANSYS or NASTRAN to solve, that's only part of, of, of this as well. And if you're really a, a big user of, of the FEM mode, you would definitely need advanced probably like uh, bridges and weighted links as well. I think it's my last slide. Okay, so I, I wanted to cover all those quickly for you. And now let's go ahead and show you uh, three examples that are part of the advanced world. This first one we'll talk about actually it covers a couple of use cases here for advanced. Here I have a quarter model. We have a little stopper up here that's going to push on a, on a, on a ball, okay, or this little um, uh, shape that's made of, of, uh, of a hyper elastic material or a rubber material. Let's go to simulate. And I wanted to do this in just a 2D world here. So um, we did under on the model setup, we did say uh, 2D axis symmetric. Okay, so this is going to be rotated around. Okay, so we just took a took a uh, a cut at this thing, and then we defined our materials. And the materials for the uh, yellow component there, the rubber component. I'm going to go ahead and show that to you. Is uh, we give it our own stress and strain condition or our relationship here. We've got um, really a true stress versus plastic strain is really the, the type of, of information we want for this. Okay, and this is going to pick the, the polynomial order um, is the type of, that we're going to select. Again, you can pick it manually or you can let Creo Simulate choose it for you. It fills the rest of the values in for us. And then now when we uh, check the box for nonlinear, it'll go ahead and use the nonlinear materials that have been defined. So we have our 2D analysis. And what we're going to do with, with this problem is I have a constraint at the top here. And this is just going to move that edge uh, in the negative y, negative, uh, y direction of, of 9 millimeters. So that's the problem. So what we want to look at here is in our analysis, I would also set up this output here. And I want uh, 21 steps. Okay, so it's going to go ahead and, and and go down nine millimeters. I've checked the boxes for contact, checked the box for hyperelasticity, and I can go ahead and run. This one does take a, a few minutes to run, so I'm going to go ahead and just review the results. And I'm going to check uh, number. I'm going to see all 21. Let's look at uh, displacement. Is fine for us today. And animate a few different use cases for this. I want to make sure that there's no stresses in my in my in my uh, metal parts at all. And I actually this is displacement. Let's go look at uh, a stress here. I want to watch how the ball kind of uh, changes shape. It's kind of going fast. Let's slow it down. Stop that and just go down like this. Right about there. We can go ahead and add a few more colors here. Let's go ahead and say uh, 10 for that one and maybe 100. And let's play that a little bit more. I see a little more dynamic colors now in our model. Okay. So here's a, a good example of a 2D problem with. Uh, some hyperelastic materials to find. All right.
let's go to our next example. Let's do this one next. This is a, a transient thermal analysis. And we'll go to uh, simulate. And what I wanted to highlight with this one is that we have a, a moving heat load. Okay, so I have a heat load that's applied to that green edge right down there. And you can see the path that's going to go in on the left side and travel along over here and then travel out that way. So we have our heat load defined. We have a value that's defined. And we also have a function here uh, to define it. So if I were just review this quick, quickly, let's do an upper limit of 1,000 and maybe a time of 400. We're going to look at this, uh, this heat load as, it's, as it travels along the, the length of our, of our edge here. So really kind of simulate, simulating like a welding rod. Okay, so that's the setup. Everything else here is just defining regular materials. Um, I don't have any other boundary conditions because I have one over there. I have a, a, a temperature applied to the outer surface there. Otherwise, everything else is a very simple setup. So if we look at our results here, let's go to our, we have 101 steps and temperature. And let's go ahead and animate that. So we will see all 99 steps and watch the heat uh, travel along that edge. And you can see it cool as it goes away. Here, starting again. And we can do this with a number, a number of different use cases. This is a traveling heat load. You can also you know, turn the heat up on something and then watch it dissipate over time. Um, conductive analysis here like this. All right, so that's a traveling heat load for thermal analysis. Let's do one more. This is a little simple little tensile bar. I wanted to just go to simulate with this. I've got uh, I've got a load over here pulling this direction in the x direction, and I've got a couple of measures. Um, I've got a measure in strain and a measure in stress. So it's also flowing along the same x axis. So if I just kind of look at this, so I want the x component of strain for a static analysis. And the material for this is made of a nonlinear material. Notice in the stress strain response, I can choose a linear hyperelastic and elastoplastic. Elastoplastic, I can give again my true stress versus plastic strain uh, response. And here I, you know, up until zero, obviously, my stress is that. But then as the, the strain changes, my stress will go ahead and modify as well. So this is the information that you need to feed this uh, for, for a uh, a nonlinear problem. Okay, so we say okay to that. That's good. You can also pick uh, uh, if you want to do it. You can also pick like a perfect plasticity. That's a simple one where it's just a flat line for the uh, uh, for the the stress as, pla as as strain changes. But let's go ahead and say okay. And for this one, we have an analysis here. We have nonlinear checked, uh, large deformation is checked, and plasticity is checked as well. We have 11 steps that we want to look at. And why don't we just go ahead and run this one live because I haven't run anything live yet. This runs uh, pretty quick, only 83 elements. It's going through number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and you notice that it says right there, it says the first occurrence of plastic deformation has occurred. Okay, so step step seven is when it started. And then it basically that's when it kicks in, the, the plastic deformation material kicks, kicks in the material properties that, that I had. And then it goes ahead and finishes, finishes the uh, simulation. 
So if I look at results, um, these are a little interesting. If I go to uh, stress, okay, it's moving a little bit there. You can see the stress is getting pretty high there as it moves its full full length. But the more interesting graph, I think, is uh, when I do this, when I say, let's look at a graph, and let's look at the measure of stress, which is one of my user-defined types of uh, measures, versus strain. And when I do that, this is what I get, um, which is exactly what should happen. You see, I remember that number seven was, uh, you know, pretty linear, and then the, the plasticity kicked in the last two. So there's our, our stress strain uh, of a tensile test, which is pretty much what we would expect uh, to see in the real world. Okay, so I hope that's given you a little bit of idea of some advanced topics. Again, I wanted to go about 25 minutes. Um, Catherine has uh, one more question for you, and then uh, please ask any questions through the, the input of the questions in the GoToWebinar dialog box, and I will go ahead and address them.